They said when they recorded, it was generally around a table. They were all in the same room, and it was almost like they did a radio play. They went from start to finish. I was, and um, I know War for Cybertron. You guys obviously weren't in the same room. I was curious if you guys still generally read the line sequentially, and also for the '80s Transformers, I was curious if that was similar, where they would go straight through because. Um, I, I heard that the voice director for G1 was kind of a bit of a perfectionist and would often have people like... Is the word prick? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Meaning to hurt your finger. <laughs> for the children. Well, uh, what I think you're referring to as far as I'm concerned is a table read, where, where you would rehearse. That's what table read is. You're all there. Once we got into the recording session, a lot of us would leave the room so that there were only two or three people who might be in that scene. Um, by the time I was doing um, Ben 10 a few years ago, we were all in the room and all together. But a lot of that may be... It's the choice of the director. It's perhaps more sophisticated equipment. So your sound isn't going to bleed. That I don't know. Yeah, I think because, um, yeah, we all recorded separately. And um, I think, you know, it's a scheduling thing. It's a time thing. The industry has really changed a lot um, since you got started. Um, like I said, I've never done a group read in my life, in my entire career, except this new podcast that I'm working on. We are doing group reads. Never done a table read for anything in my life. Um, for this, we were lucky. We did get the scripts in advance. That is also a rarity. Um, most of my sessions, maybe I'll know the character or characters I'm doing before I walk in. Usually I don't. Um, I'll go in. There's an Excel spreadsheet. We go boom, 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 two in a row, redirect, two in a row. But for this, we did actually have the scripts, which was wonderful. We were able to read through them in advance, get context. I think for the most part, we went sequentially, the exception being vocally stressful stuff, so screaming and yelling and fighting and stuff would be kept to the end. Um, yeah. Yeah? I want to do a shout out to the voice actor. Why is it that way? <laughs> you were shaking your head before. Yeah. <laughs> Production likes to go faster, faster, faster. They like to spend less, less money. Um, and for the most part, voice directors, in my opinion, are not voice directors. Most of the time, it's people who shouldn't have the position. Uh, mm. We had to fight to get them the scripts ahead of time. The mm -hmm. thing I was going to ask was how much, how little information you guys get on jobs, which is the most incredible thing. And I worked on, in my entire career, we got one table read. And that was for the second Tomb Raider. And it's, uh, what you guys have to do with the little information. Yeah. Thing, and getting you guys the script was a huge change. Yeah, so just as... Uh, <sighs> NDA has become the word of the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, the video game strike a couple years ago changed things. So back in the day, back in, I guess, the beginning of like our day, yeah. I don't know about back in your day, um, everything was codenamed. We had, and things are still codenamed, but if it, there's now a loophole where if you ask your agent, they will tell you what the project is. But I mean, we're dealing with stuff where the game or the show is codenamed, the characters are codenamed, everything has changed. You might know who the executive producer is, so okay, I know this is the EP, so I can go see what else they've done and try. They literally mm -hmm. make it as hard as possible to audition for them because they're so worried about security. And then, the, and then you wonder why you're seeing three iterations of auditions coming through for the same projects because they're not getting what they want because they're not telling the actors. Then when you finally book it, now, thankfully, they do have to tell you what the project is. I, I, I still have games I recorded six, seven years ago prior to the video game strike. To this day, I have no idea what they are because they were codenamed mm. for my sessions. They didn't even tell me what it was. Wow. Now they have to tell you. Um, but yeah, you don't necessarily know the character. You might have auditioned for something. And you know, I, I tend to be a utility player, so I go in and play, do my three characters, maybe the fourth for a bonus. It's a spreadsheet. You don't, you rarely know the other characters you're up against. You don't know the world. That's why you rely on a good voice director 
to guide you through what the scenario is because I'm looking at an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, I have no context for this. I don't know anything. So yeah, it really, one, you have to rely on your imagination and your training and hopefully have a great uh, director to work off of. Um, but it's so different, for, especially for those of us who've done film, who've done theater, where you're like, dude, I got three months to figure this character out. This is great. Or maybe, you know, for, for film, you get the sides a week in advance. Um, we don't have that luxury. Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. That's a great question because I think a lot of people don't know that about the industry. Yeah. 